Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Sunday's recap of Window into the Collectoverse. This week we got to talk to Jonathan, we got to talk to Bree, we got to talk to Jay, and we got to talk to myself. Uh, so what you're going to be able to do is you'll be able to watch all of the episodes right now. Um, we've put them all together for you guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Hi, I'm Jonathan with West Devon's Coin and Stamp, and I'm here today to talk to you about the five cent silver produced in 1921 by the Royal Canadian Mint. This coin had an original mintage of over 2.5 million, and to repay our war debts to the United States, they were destroyed, leaving approximately 400 left in existence today. This is the, one of the rarest coins in Canadian history. Come with us as we explore the 1921 five cent silver. We are fortunate enough to be able to show you a couple examples of the 1921 five cent silver produced by the Royal Canadian Mint. If you are lucky enough to have one of these coins in your collection, do not spend it. As this is one of the most sought after coins by coin collectors everywhere, it is definitely worth more than its weight in gold. The head side of this coin, also known as the obverse, has the effigy of King George V on it. The reverse side contains the 22 maple leaf design that was created in 1903. As I had said that this coin is worth more than its weight in gold, it is actually comprised of 80% silver and 20% copper. We'll take it over to what I call our elemental analyzer to check it out for ourselves. So we are over here at the elemental analyzer where we will place our 1921 five cent silver in on the viewing window. We basically place our coin on there. We close our top and we press start. And you'll see the lights turn on, signifying that radiation beams are flowing through the chamber. And we can also see that it's starting to show us preliminary chemical compositions of the object, or in this case, our five cent silver and our final results are in we can see AG the Latin abbreviation for silver 83.88 percent and CU the abbreviation for copper 16.12 percent I'd like to thank you for our tuning in today hope you enjoyed this week's episode please don't forget to like and subscribe and from all of us at West Evans Coin and Stamp and all of us in the Collectoverse, we thank you for watching. Bye. Hey everyone, I'm Jay and I'm the comics manager here at Edmonton Comics, which is part of West Edmonton Coin and Stamp, which is why you're here on this channel checking us out. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today, kind of a starter of a Comics 101. We're going to help you figure out if you're not into comics, why you want to get into it and what you want to get into, what the scene and industry is all about, and even what the scene is like specifically here at West Edmonton Coin and Stamp. Um, so you're looking to get into comics. All right, fine. There's a lot of different options here, a lot of different things you want to look at. You want to get into reading? Do you want to get into collecting? Do you want to get into investing? Are you getting them for yourself or a friend? Uh, the nice thing is when you come to a specialty shop like this, as opposed to going to like a big box store, like a Walmart or Chapter or something like that, you're going to get more hands-on treatment, which is really good. So you can come and see me, one of my coworkers, and we can help you out, find something that you really want to get into. Now, one of our most popular titles, if not the most popular title right now at Edmonton Comics is Batman. Everybody knows who Batman is, right? The guy with all the cool gadgets uh, and all the superpowers like wealth and money and all that kind of cool stuff. And he goes around and fights justice because he's all angsty. And you know, when you get angsty, the first thing you want to do is slap on a rubber suit and go punch someone in the face. I know I do, but we won't get into my issues. 
there are a lot of Batman options to choose from when you come in. So, and a lot of times it seems very overwhelming because the Bat family, which includes Batman, Robin, Batgirl, and a bunch of others, tend to cross over into books from time to time and you get these big, what they call events. And uh, when you're looking for these events, you wanna have, again, a specialist like myself or one of my coworkers to help you through that to see like, do I need every book or do I need just the main story? Um, but either way, you know, you're gonna have a good time uh, checking out some Batman. The nice thing about modern comics, artwork quality is super, super high. You may not, and a lot of people come in and say, oh, these comics are so much different than when I was a kid. Yeah, absolutely they are. The art level is elevated, coloring, lettering is elevated, story writing is elevated, even the paper quality is elevated. So things are much, much different than even when I was a kid buying comics for 20 cents a piece. And you notice these books are no longer 20 cents a piece, they're about five bucks Canadian. Um, still a pretty good investment if you're reading a comic properly. Should take you a good 20 minutes or so to read a comic. You know, most people will say average about a minute a page to kind of like soak things in. Although, of course, there's always people who like to do the multi-stage reading, uh, which is to kind of blow through it and uh, read all the dialogue, kind of get the gist, and then revisit it later on. Choice is up to you. One of the great things about comics is you, the reader, get to control the pace of the story. It's not like a film or TV where things just kind of rattle off and you have to either really, really be paying attention or maybe you have to rewind. Or if you're in a movie theater, there is no rewind. You're kind of hooped. Um, so comics are a really cool medium for that, where you get to control the pace at which you take in the story. And there's a lot of really great stories. So with Batman right now, uh, they're climbing up to issue 100 and they're doing this whole big thing with the Joker. Uh, and it's called the Joker War. It's just Joker's gripping Gotham City. He's created, uh, well, he's found a way to create a new chemical that kind of makes zombies, but they're not really zombies. They're just reanimated dead people. If there's really a difference, I don't know. I'm not that big into necromancy, so I can't tell you. Um, but he's doing this. He's taking over the city and things are running wild. So Batman has to recruit his former sidekick, Robin, who's now Nightwing, to help him out and, uh, and try to save Gotham, as all good heroes do, try to save the citizens. Now, if you're not looking to get into like the big, big story, there's always like a lot of specials and one shots and mini series that they'll do tied into the Batman universe. Uh, another cool series that just came out recently was called Three Jokers. And the whole point of this story is it's based on the theory that the Joker commits so many crimes and has been such a problem to so many different heroes. Is there more than one Joker? And do they all have different methods of operation and do they all have different plans of attack? That's what this series explores. Uh, it's a short three issue series, um, but it's a little bit thicker than a standard comic. It's called what they call prestige format. Uh, and it you know, comes out once a month, but there's only three issues. So it's a pretty good, dense little story, good uh, chunk of investment for you and a good reading time. And if you're looking for something even a bit more casual than that, just recently released is issue 1027 of Detective Comics. Now, for those of you who maybe say like, wow, that's a super weird issue number uh, to be spotlighting. The trick is here is that Batman first appeared in Detective Comics number 27, which means this is the 1000th issue, theoretically, of Batman appearing in Detective Comics. Now, some of the purists will quibble a little bit about the numbering because of course, you can get into the whole math of the thing and it doesn't quite work out. And we're not quite factoring in extra issues like a zero issue and stuff like that. But nonetheless, this little bad boy here is just a celebration of Batman and his appearances in Detective Comics. And it's a variety of different short stories featuring all sorts of characters that are done by different writers and different artists. This is pretty good because this would actually give you a great exposure to a, a large variety of Batman material. You can look to see like what kind of writers do you like? What kind of art styles do you like? So when you go to actually pick another Batman book, you can look for similar type qualities. And that's very true about almost any book. You kind of want to look around a little bit, pop open the covers, read a little bit, check out the artwork and see what it is that appeals to you. It's those things that are going to hook you into comics and keep you coming back for more. And hopefully they'll keep you coming back to Edmonton Comics right here at West Edmonton Coin and Stamp, right in uh, West Edmonton Mall here. Cheap plug, a little thanks to Nick Foley there. Keep going. Everybody, it's Bree here, your resident hockey enthusiast at West Edmonton Coin and Stamp. 
Today we are going to be doing a little bit of a pack opening for you. We are looking at the Series 2 2019-2020 Upper Deck. This is our retail tin. It comes with 10 packs. And uh, we're just going to see what we can get in here. Looking for some young guns, maybe some canvas. Never know until you look. So let's get to it. Handy dandy exacto knife that's not so sharp. It's my first tin opening. Alrighty. Look at that. So there's the inside of the tin. Looks like we have an exclusive as well. 2019 2020 OPG Glossy. We'll probably leave that till the very end. All right, let's get started. So these are retail packs. There's um, eight cards per pack, unless you have a fancy card. Sometimes you'll get a little bit less. So let's see what we get in here. Right off the hop, I see Jeff Skinner. Pretty sweet. We were gonna use this little thing to cover it up and be a little sneaky and not show you what's going on underneath, but I think I've changed my mind. So to start, we've got Carey Price, Montreal Canadiens. Nice card. Nate Schmidt for the Golden Knights. Fun fact, used to play for my favorite team, the Washington Capitals. David Backus. Sergei Bobrovsky. Ooh. An Artemi Panarin canvas. Very nice. Arturi Lekkonen. <laughs> Jacob Truba for the Rangers. And last but not least, we got Jeff Skinner. Awesome. Not bad. So we got a canvas out of that guy. I think we should sleeve that up. And we'll keep them in a nice little pile on the side for our fancy cards. <laughs> All right, let's let's continue. Got these packs. All right, Calvin DeHaan for the Blackhawks. Ryan Johansson. Alexander Edler for the Canucks. Josh Manson. Oh, I think I see a young gun. Max Verano for the Senators. Nice. We got Jonathan Huberto, Thomas Grice, and Matt Duchesne. <laughs> Let's move on. Pack number three. So far, so good. One young gun, one upper deck canvas. Oh, Zach Cassian, resident tough guy. Timu Meyer for the Sharks and their stealth jerseys. Meckler Carlson. Robin Leonard, who doesn't play there anymore, unfortunately, but Robin Leonard nonetheless. Oh, we got an upper deck rookie canvas, or sorry, portrait of Adam Fox for the Rangers. We got Braden Coburn, Travis Konechny, and Eric Johnson for the Colorado Avalanche. Very nice. Moving on. Yoel Armia. Very good. Oh, Alex Ovechkin. Very nice. Colton Pareko for the St. Louis Blues. Colin White. Ooh. And we've got a marquee rookie, Opichi Nikita Gusev. Very nice. 
Claude Giroux. Anders Lee for the Islanders. And last but not least, Alexander Steen for the Blues. Alrighty, we're getting there. Oh, this one feels a little thicker. Oh, looks like we got an insert in this guy. To start, we've got Kevin Shattenkirk. Adrian Kempe. Oh, look at that. Rookie materials, Elvis Mer Mers Lincolns for the Blue Jackets. It's a really nice card. Good patch. We've got Anze Kopitar. Vince Dunn. And Brandon Montour for the Sabres. Nice. All right, I think we've got our nice card for the pack, unfortunately, but let's keep going. Alrighty, Andre Burakovsky, Jason Spezza for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Patrick Kane, James Reimer for the Hurricanes. Oh, look, we got another Upper Deck Portrait rookie, Lean Bergman for the Sharks. Very nice. Tanner Pearson, <laughs> Derek Ryan, AKA Doc for the Calgary Flames, and Eric Carlson. So far, so good. Kyle's getting a little bit out of hand over there, but <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all right, third to last pack here. We start off with Carl Haglin for the Capitals. Michael Grabner for the Coyotes. Vladimir Tarasenko. It's a funky picture. Will Butcher for the Devils. Oh, Capo Caco, Young Guns for the Rangers. Very nice. Got Kevin Fiala for The Wild. Paul Byron for the Canadiens. And last but not least, Alex Iafalo for the Los Angeles Kings. Awesome, we're getting close. I wish they'd add an oversized card to these tins. That'd be really nice. Upper deck, add oversized cards to these tins. Alrighty. We start off with Craig Anderson for the Senators. Underrated goalie, in my opinion. Andreas Anthanasiu. He is not a Detroit Red Wing anymore. He plays for the Oilers now. Chris Letang for the Penguins. Mika Zibanejad for the Rangers. Got off to a hot start this year. Kirby Dak, OPG Marquee Rookie. Not bad. Carter Hutton for the Sabres. Those absolutely beautiful gold threaded Sabres jerseys. Oh, we got a Series 2 checklist. Numbers 251 to 350 with our Temi Panarin and Sergei Bobrovsky. Sad they used to be teammates. And Andre Kasha. Very nice. Now, our last pack of regular cards from this tin. Let's see if we can pull another young gun. We got Semyon Varlamov. Did a pretty good job this year in the playoffs. Craig Smith from Nashville. Blake Wheeler in his Jets Heritage jersey card. Anthony Bolivier for the New York Islanders. Oh, sad. 
Another marquee rookie, Clem Costin for the St. Louis Blues. Not a bad card. We've got Brady Shea for the Rangers. Fun fact, I named my fantasy team after him. Colton Sissons for the Nashville Predators. And last but not least, Anthony Mantha for the Red Wings. So in total, we got three young guns, a couple different canvases, nothing too special, but fun one nonetheless. Now, let's see what's in this special pack. Hopefully it's good. Ooh. They make these things impossible to open. Okay, we got Barrett Hayton. We've got Kirby Dack, another rookie. OPG Glossy, very nice. And we got Jack Hughes. Very nice. And that's that for the tin today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week with another box opening with Bree. Hey, it's Trevor here from West Edmonton Coin and Stab. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Window into the Collectiverse. We are going to unbox. A lot of people have been really excited and waiting for this guy to come in. We are going to open this guy up. This is the Hot Toys Thanos from Endgame. So there is a, a, like I said, a lot of hype behind this guy, and we really want to get this guy open. So we are going to go ahead and open this sucker up. Oh my gosh, look at all those cool accessories. Mm. Do we have a knife there? No, don't throw a knife. Thank you. Hand it to me gently. Thank you very much. All right. What do we have here? Oh, yes. Ah, the smell of fresh plastic. This guy's pretty hefty. He's a hefty one. <laughs> this is awesome. Whoa. <laughs> There's his, what do you call it, a glaive? So that's actually a separate piece. So we'll pull that sucker out of there. Wah, 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 wah. That is awesome. So we'll put that down to the side. Oh, I just realized I sound like Darth Vader. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. We will get this guy out of here. Oh boy. Oh look, it's a little protective plastic thing. It's like a plastic helmet. Pull that off. Wow. That is some crazy detail. Oh, this is the head I've been wanting. Mm. The angry Thanos head. Okay, so this is pretty sweet. So we're gonna take away all the protective pieces. So he is ready to pose and display. Get rid of all the pieces of plastic everywhere because those are in no way appealing, but necessary. <laughs> and you know what? We're gonna do this right off the bat because you know what? He is never going to be displayed with this head. Oh, come on off. <laughs> Here we go. We are gonna put on the angry Thanos head because, well, he looks so cool when he's angry. Good. And, well, we can, this is a cool helmet, so it looks like it, uh, you can have, oh, that is awesome. How cool is that? Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit him here for a second, and let's see how well he stands up by himself. 
can he stand up by himself? This is the question. The question of the day. Can Thanos stand on his own? And of course he can because they only make quality at Hot Toys. You gotta get him in the right. Holy, it's got like, it's got locking joints, which is always helpful, especially when you have a figure of this size. Oh, you just need to get some even weight distribution here. Ooh. There, perfect. Now, while he's standing there, we're gonna pull out the base because it's always easier to get these guys to stand when you have the base. So we'll just put this behind here for now. Because we're gonna pull out the gauntlet in a second because that's how we're gonna wanna pose him. And put that down there. And of course he comes with a nice big Avengers Endgame base. So we'll just put that up there because that's how we're gonna wanna display him. And, oh, look at that. It's going to fit nicely right underneath his loincloth. Fantastic. They were thinking when they made this one. I always found it so awkward when you're trying to display a figure. And he's got this thing just jammed up his crotch. It's really awkward. Um, so it's, this is a very nice design. Um, sick. That is awesome. Okay, so now let's bring up the other accessories and let's get a cool pose going on here. So we're going to pull off this one and we are going to put on his gauntlet. And you know what? I think we should do the... I think we should switch the fist for the snap. Ta-da! And this one has the light-up feature. We don't have any batteries in it right now, so we're not gonna worry about that. But we're gonna give the snap, because that is what changes everything. Ta-da! Snap. All right. So we'll put that in there, that in there, that in there. And so now we've got him to a point that we can go ahead and pose him the way that we want. And then we'll go ahead and put him in the cabinet. So that was our unboxing of Thanos from Endgame. Pay attention in the coming weeks for more unboxings, more info on comic books, on coins, on Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards, D&D. &D. There's so many things here at West Edmonton going to stamp that I highly encourage you to come and take a look. We're actually located in the world's biggest mall, the West Edmonton Mall. And if you pop down, you can talk to one of our specialists in some of the various departments. We have an unbelievable amount of selection to choose from. And I'm sure anybody could spend hours in here as I can just looking at these amazing toys. Anyways, Trevor here. Thank you for watching Window Into the Collectiverse. Until next time. Today we will be opening up the 2016 Megatins, Kaiba and Yugi, and we will also be opening up this uh, special edition Ancient Prophecy. Hi guys, how's it going? Uh, I am Michael Slade from uh, West Side Coin Stamp. I have definitely been in this game for a long time, 20 plus years. Uh, I have had multiple regional tops. I've had a YCS top and I've gone to worlds and I have placed third uh, 
in the world's uh, uh, championships. Okay, we will be starting opening this box of Ancient Prophecy uh, Special Edition. And it comes with uh, three packs and one of two super variant cards. And the variant cards are Red Eyes Wyvern and Solar Recharge. Both powerful. All right, let's get this cracked. Get this all out. And what do we got? We got Solar Recharge, super awesome. That's a, that's a good one, that's a good card. And just throw that right down there. And get the packs out, throw that down there. And now off to our first and off uh, three packs. All right, starting with the first pack. Let's see what we got. Got a Psychic Soul, Fossil Dig, Flamebow Counter, Cyber Doctor, and our rare is a Soul Diary. Very cool. And the other cards are Infernity Beast, In Depth An Amulet, Shiny Black Sea, and Sunny Pixie. All right. Put that down there. Next pack. And let's flip it around. And we got a Fishboard Blaster, Psychic Soul, Fossil Dig, Flame Counter, Falcon uh, B as our rare. Uh, super good fire jet. Uh, Kokomiri Boulder. Slip of Fortune, Deep Sea uh, Float, and Scary Moth. That is a Scary Moth. Last and final pack of the Ancient Prophecy Special Edition. And hopefully we get something awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ancient uh, Crimson Ape, Genetic Woman, Shark Cruiser. Whoa, Future Vision. That is a good card. Holy, that is good because super rares and above are hard to get out of the set. Also, we got a Seropod Brachian as our rare. Sunny Pixie is our next card. Core Blaster, Advanced Draw, and Blackwing Fane the Steel Chain as the other cards. Uh, we're going to set that right over there with the hollow or above area. And... I accidentally shuffled my rare. Oops. There we go. And throw our last pack down there. Next off, we will be opening up. I think we're going to start with this Kaiba's Collection Box. This is an awesome product. Came out a long time ago. And you also do get a giant blue eyes white dragon. Everybody loves blue eyes white dragon because this entire thing is based off Kaiba. And he is the president of Kyber Corp. You also get his booster packs of three Kaiba pack, chances of ultimate dragon and or chaos emperor dragon. And then you do get a three uh, pack of uh, the um, Yugi's uh, duelist pack where you get the uh, Paladin uh, um, Dark Paladin with uh, also chances on the uh, other Chaos Brethren, which is Chaos uh, Soldier. And you do get a Blue Eyes White Dragon uh, promo, guaranteed. And the starter deck inside is the uh, uh, Kaiba Reloaded. This came out a long, long time ago. And we will be... Uh, getting that set aside there We've got our giant promo blue eyes white dragon blue eyes has always been one of my favorites and then set his little cousin there playable version and we will get all these packs out and since it is a kaiba box we will be opening the kaiba packs first and our first pack is going to be this one and we'll set that down there and turn around and see what we get. That's, hopefully it's something good. Uh, Soggy the Dark Clown. Ring of Defense. 
Familiar Knight, the Topsumi Giant, and our rare is Cost Down. All right, we're going to set those down there. Next pack. Flip it around, throw that down there. Saga the Dark Clown, White Dragon Ritual, Cloning. Whoa, Fiend Sanctuary. That's a good card. And a dimensional dragon, different dimension dragon. So yeah, that was a good pack. All right, last and final pack of our duelist pack Kaiba. Hopefully we can get that uh, ultimate terror, which is the uh, chaos dragon or the, uh, throw that there, the other one. So we'll got Z metal tank, cloning, a judge man, Lord of D and a Kaiser Glider. That's okay. That's a good, decent card. Next, we're gonna open up uh, the Yugi pack for our first pack. And throw that down there. And next we've got Brain Control, Big Shield Guardian, Spellbinding Circle, Karibo, and Exchange. That's a powerful card. Let's you uh, exchange one card with your opponent. And next pack. We got Stronghold Moving Fortress, Spellbinding Circle, Blackluster Ritual, Swords of Revealing Light, and a Marshmallow. This guy is very hard to kill in battle because he can't be killed in battle. And next pack of our last Yugi pack. We got a Yellow Gadget, Buster Blader, Stronghold Moving Fortress, Swords of Revealing Light, and another Exchange. That's all right. That's super cool. Doubling up on our Exchange. And next we will be uh, getting open the Kaiba uh, Mega Tin, which also has a nice promo pack inside. Also a guaranteed god card of the Egyptian god Obelisk the Tormentor, Kaiba's personal favorite. And we'll get that guy. Plus, if we open up the promo pack, we also have some other cool cards as well such as uh, we got a blue eyes white dragon to join our other blue eyes. We got a blue eyes spirit dragon. We got a DD King uh, Alexander. Uh, Aether the evil empowering dragon and a uh, well popular hand trap known as ghost ogre and snow rabbit. I'll set those there. And off to our first Mega Pack 2016. We, we get some good stuff. Uh, it has a lot of powerful cards within the set. So a Shironui Samurai, a Harmonic Oscillation, Magic Spectre Tempest, uh, Perform Pal Slot Tiger, uh, Super Memory Samurai Soul Buster Gauntlet, Destruction Swordsman Fusion, Whoa, a, and each one has a uh, four uh, hollow slot. So starting off with fl Fluffle Mouse, that's cool. Solemn Strike, oh, that's a good card. Ooh, very well-known card. Uh, a Bloom Diva Malayus Chore, and Assault Blackwing uh, Kunai the Drizzle as our rare. And we got a Shiranui style synthesis, Perform Pal Silver Claw, Raid Raptor Fuzzy Lanius, Tam Tam the Molest Diva, Keeper of the Shrine, and a Fluffle Crane. And we will set that there. Off to our next pack. And throw that down there. Uh, next, we got a Ray Raptor's Ultimate Mace, DD Pandora. Perform Pal Bit Bite Turtle, uh, Despot Jet, Bird of Paradise Lost, Perform Pal uh, Salute Tiger, another Fluffle Mouse, 
a Buster Blader Dragon uh, Destroyer Swordsman. Oh, that's a good guy. Whoa, we got the Black Luster Soldier Super Soldier. He's awesome. And a Toon Cyber Dragon. I'm actually a big fan of Toons. They are one of my favorite decks. And Perform Palace Devil Claw. Shiranui uh, Samsara. Destruction Swordsman Flash. Perform Palace Spin Goose. Uh, Dynamis Charge. And uh, Secret Blast. Uh, next and final pack of our Kaibo Megaton. And we'll just throw that down there and we'll get rid of the tin since there are no more surprises within said tin. Uh, just the prone pack that you start with. And flip that around. And next we got a Pot of Forbidden, Retaliating Sea, Score of Malayas Diva, Backup Rider, Robot uh, Buster Destruction Sword, First Aid Squad, Super Rare is a DDD Wave Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok. Painful Decision. Uh, Magic Spectre Tornado. And a Raiden, the multiple dimensional Kaiju. Kaijus are very well known and they are used a lot. Also, we have our Kama of the Destruction Swordsman, Super Heavy Samurai Gloves. Uh, Super Serenari Transporter, Edge Imp Fright Furloid, Perform Pal Thunder Rhino, and Ace uh, Sapario the Malayus Songstress. All right, off to our next and uh, last tin of our 2016 Mega Tins, which is Yugi, and has his Egyptian God Slay for the Sky Dragon. So we're just going to throw right down there and open this up. And of course, like the other one, this has a promo pack as well with some pretty cool cards. And we're going to open this and see what's inside. Uh, throw that down there. And we got a Slife of the Sky Dragon, a Dark Magician, Yugi's Ace Monster, Faithful Companion, Ebon High Magician, a DDK King Gessus. Uh, Draconics, the Empowered Warrior, and a Perform Pal uh, Pendulum Sorcerer. That card's cool because it's used in a very powerful Pendulum deck called the Pei Pei Magician, or Pendulum Magician. Uh, off to our first mega, uh, next Mega Tin pack here, 2016. Dynamist Rush, uh, Shiranui Samurai, Harmonic Oscillation, Opera uh, the Melodist Diva, DD Human Resources, All Lou Mirage. A, off to our rares is the Magis Spectre Cat Nekomata. Whoa, Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. This guy's very cool because he has an ability that destroys all special summon monsters. Uh, lose one turn. That's a very good staple as well because that uh, allows you uh, to turn your opponent's monsters to defense once they're summoned. A Pendulum Reborn. A Half Break. Uh, DD Contract Change. Ray Raptor Mimicry Lanius. Despot 4. Perform Pal uh, Clam Camel Lump. And Dark uh, Contract with the Swamp King. All right, off to our next pack. And set there, there. And off to Magic Spectre Tempest. A uh, Phantom Griffin. Destruction uh, Dragon Buster Sword Dragon. This guy's real cool because he's used to lock out the uh, opponent's uh, extra deck from being used. Uh, side effects, first aid squad, a forbidden apocrypha, brilliant fusion, another solemn strike. That's cool. Fright for Sabretooth. Uh, they remind me of Five Nights Freddy's a little bit. 
another kaiju, which is uh, Kamungus, the sticky string. And we got a Destruction Sword Flash, Grand Horn of Heaven, Contract L Laundering, Dark Dorido, Human Winds, and a Super Soldier Rebirth to go with our Super Soldier Repulled. Set that there. And off to this last pack of the Mega Tins. So we don't need this anymore of our UV tin. That's empty. And let's see what we get. Flip it around. Kyoto Water Tower Front, Despot uh, 8, a Mistaken Acquisition, Cybernetic Fusion Support, Perform Pell Salute Tiger, Heavy uh, Super Heavy Samurai Soul Buster Gauntlet, a Utopia 39, S39 Prime, that's awesome. Holy, uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity, that is a really good card. This guy likes to absorb monsters a lot and has the ability to. Uh, good old Buster Blader, the Destruction Swordsman. Uh, Bane of all dragons. Uh, Perform Pal uh, Splash Mammoth. A Shiranui uh, Samurai Saga. Uh, Putrin Pudding Body Buddies. Bad Luck Blast. Uh, Shirinui style uh, Swallows Slash, a Statue of Anguish Pattern, and our last card for the Megaton is the uh, Extinction on Schedule. 